Hello everyone, I'm Brior, and welcome back to Good Game Empire. The month of June is nearly over, and it's been one of the busiest months in recent history for updates to the game. Most months we've been getting just one update, but in the month of June we got five separate new updates for Good Game Empire. For that reason, I thought it would be a great idea to take a moment to bring all of you up to speed on all of the new features and content in the game. In this video, I'll also be giving you my opinion and perspective, so maybe you can get some insights you didn't already have. In the month of June, we saw a rerun of the Spring Nights Festival with the Nymph Castellan set. For many players, this was a disappointment because the Nymph Castellan set had previously been available. Also, Castellan sets tend to be less useful on average than Commanders, but for me, it was an opportunity to get that set, which I had missed out on in the previous month due to wrapping up things at college. The Nymph set is actually pretty good, especially for Outposts, and I managed to complete it. It has not been fully upgraded at the Technicus yet, but I have the full upgraded stats from the forum, and I've put them up on the screen for you now. As you can see, it's actually quite viable, although not quite as good as, for example, the Baramond Castellan that I have now finished. Throughout this month, we've also had to suffer through the Kingdom's Cup, another one of those cross-server PvP tournaments, this time based off of the FIFA World Cup, because soccer is apparently a big thing outside of America. The problem that I and many others have with this type of event is that the reward pool is so small and exclusive. The competition is between all of the alliances in the game on every server, so there can only be a few winners, which results in disappointment for the vast majority of players. However, in this iteration, it does appear like there was a greater possibility for your alliance to place within the rankings. A total of four alliances from the United States server placed within the top 40 alliances globally. Those were the Misk United FU, the Kingdom of Neff, Sovereign Kings, and Fluffy Unicorns. Of those four alliances, Fluffy Unicorns actually advanced into the top 16 globally, so congratulations to them. The second of the five June updates was, in my opinion, the most favorable. Good Game Studios first made some changes to the Samurai Invasion. These changes mirrored those which took place to the Nomad Invasion just a short while back. In essence, Good Game Studios has introduced a new nine-piece commander set to go along with the Samurai Invasion. This commander is very good against Samurai targets, but it will be almost useless against anything else, and you can bet that it will be quite difficult to obtain. I think much more importantly for most players is that the Yoshiro commander set, the old, but not actually that old, Samurai commander set, is going to be introduced to the Bushi points shop. This commander set is one of the very last well-rounded uh, NPC commander sets. It doesn't quite have enough courtyard for PvP combat, but you could use it against foreign lords and blood crow invaders should you wish. It does have plus 60% glory, so that makes it a really good set for those events. The biggest change in June by far though was the rework of the inventory for decorative items. Now this was a change that had been requested for a very long time, and it's also a change that I requested in my 16 fixes for Good Game Empire video. So if you don't mind, I'm going to take credit for this now being a part of the game. In essence, you can now move your decorative items between your castles. The inventory is now a global inventory, which makes it a little bit more clunky to place decorative items in your castles, but I'm willing to deal with that extra hassle to have this great new feature. For anybody who's aesthetically minded, it's now possible to move all of your decorations of the same type to one castle to make it look nice. It's also possible to move all of your highest, most powerful decorative items to one castle to maximize your food production there. It's also possible to start a castle in the Storm Islands and move in decorative items, which will boost your food production and enable you to support a lot of troops at that location right off the bat. 
Since this update has taken place, we've only had the Battle of Baramond appear once, but I'm very interested to see whether or not the morale decorative items, which could be stored in the global inventory, will carry over to the next iteration of the event. If they do, that could definitely be a game changer. Now, the implementation of this new feature did not go 100% swimmingly. After the feature was introduced, players found a bug whereby you could double your decorative items. Essentially, you needed to take them out of one of your Outer Kingdom's castle and then put them back in to one of your outposts. Then, after you waited overnight, you'd have another whole set of them waiting for you in your inventory. Now, Good Game Studios did obviously pick up on this, and it's not something that you can do anymore. Good Game Studios also managed to delete all of the extra decorative items, which is pretty cool, because that would have been a huge unfair advantage. However, for some very smart players who doubled their decorative items and then sold them to collect extra coins, they got to keep those coins. So I know players who made over 50 million coins based off of this bug. Oh well, I guess. At least the bug only worked with a few specific decorative items, like for example, the Nomad Princess. In the third of the five June updates, the developers introduced a new feature to equipment called Equipment Power. Now, I don't fully understand this one either, so the best that I can do is read to you what the developers wrote on the forum. How powerful a piece of equipment is will be based on its rarity, which has been a thing for a while, but now also on its power level, which will be displayed by a number. The power levels will range from 1 to 9, so level 1 will be the lowest level, while level 9 will be the highest level. With the power system being implemented, there can be situations where equipments, gems, heroes might have the same name and appearance, but can have other effect values and or additional effects due to the power rarity and power level system. This appears to be what the developers were talking about during their developer live stream, which I reacted to right here on this YouTube channel. I can uh, say that one of uh, our main focus for 2018 um, is how we handle equipment in, uh, in Empire. So you guys are going to, to have quite a lot of news coming soon regarding what is going to be the, the, next, uh, the next stage for how we handle equipment on, uh, on Empire. And these are all ideas that we are collecting from, from you guys that we are going to bring to the table when we are designing those features. The update appears just to be a way to essentially rework the equipment system so that Good Game Studios can keep introducing more powerful sets for players to work for or pay for. However, the fact that copies of the same equipment set could now have different values is kind of annoying, because if you're trying to run trains against nomad camps, for example, what you really want is copies of the exact same commander with the exact same stats, so you only have to use that one attack preset. I'm sure we'll have a lot more information about this part of the update soon, but for now, the only equipment set it appears to be working on is the new set that you can get through the Wheel of Fortune. The fully upgraded stats for the artifacts of the Phoenix Knight don't seem to be available on the forums, but just looking at the set, it's kind of interesting because the set bonuses are half for the Samurai camps and half for the Nomad and Khan camps, so I'm worried that this set will be a jack of all trades, but master of none. I guess that's to be determined. However, if you aren't willing to buy a whole lot of Wheel of Fortune tickets, you probably won't be getting this set anytime soon. There have also been changes to the Wheel of Fortune, whereby you now need 30 tickets to spin the wheel in regular mode, and 300 to spin it in pro mode, which kind of sucks for anybody who was saving up. There's one last thing that might be of interest about the new Wheel of Fortune's equipment set, and that is the dented igneous plate. Now you might remember a few months ago, we were getting this igneous plate equipment item from the Blood Crow invasion. It seemed like a bug because it was part of a set, but no other pieces of that set were available. So indeed, Good Game Studios confirmed that we weren't supposed to be getting that piece of equipment, and they changed its name from igneous plate to dented igneous plate, and it no longer appears as part of that set. 
Well, that set is, of course, the new Wheel of Fortune set. However, when you look on the tooltip for any of the pieces of equipment in that set, indeed, it does say dented igneous plate, so who knows, maybe that piece of equipment that we got earlier on will still work. The third update of June also brought back Lucky Pennies, which are, of course, used for the Wishing Well. The twist this time is that you can only get the Lucky Pennies in Ruby Offers, which, quite frankly, is beyond insulting. The whole purpose of the Wishing Well was to level the playing field and give non-buying players an opportunity to collect the rubies necessary for building upgrades and all of that good stuff. For the legacy of that feature now to be just corrupted by these ruby offers is ridiculous. It's a joke. With the fourth June update came new Nomad tools that are apparently only aimed at ruby whales, so I'm not really going to talk about those. And also, we got the level 14 build item through the charm shop, through the uh, shapeshifter invasion, that's right. This new build item is indeed a base food production build item, and it gives players who already own the apprentice set something to buy with their charms. Now, I'm kind of opposed to any new rewards through the shapeshifter event because it's just a broken event. The only thing that I do is send 32 man attacks in hardcore mode and just collect points over time, but whatever. I guess anything that helps players improve food production could be a good thing. This update also introduced a level 12 keep build item, and uh, of course those build items are for wall space, so that's one that you should be interested in getting. Unfortunately, it's only available through the armorer right now for rubies, but I think that will be an event reward in the near future. And again, you're going to want to get that one because extra troops on the wall will help you defend your castle. The fourth update in June also brought permanent Castellan looks that will change your castle so it looks either like a sand castle or a castle made of toy blocks. Now these are just aesthetic changes. It says this on the form that you cannot embed gems into them, but the in-game offer for these look items does not say that. So many players have been confused. They, they see a permanent look item that they think that they can put a gem into and they just buy it. Don't do that, you cannot put a gem into these items. If you have already bought them, I would contact support and I would ask for a refund. As soon as I knew about this new update, I put up warnings both on my Twitter page and in my Discord server not to buy these look items. So if you'd like warnings like that in the future, be sure to follow me on Twitter or just come join our Discord server where we'd love to have you. I've already made a video called Worst Ruby Purchases, but if I were to remake that one, this would be right up there, perhaps at number one. Not only are they functionally useless, but they're expensive and they look like garbage, especially the Sandcastle one. At least that's my opinion. The fifth and final update of June brought with it some new appearance build items for the barracks and the keep. They look really nice, much better than those Castellan looks we just talked about, but they will be ruby only and they don't offer any benefit other than maybe a very small amount of public order, so I definitely would not recommend you invest in them. And also that keep build item that we talked about earlier was actually part of update 5 and not 4, so whoops, my apologies. Alright, that brings us to the end of the June updates, and also to the end of this video. Let me know if this video was helpful, or if it was complete garbage. If you guys do think that stuff like this is helpful, maybe I'll make a similar video come the end of July about whatever new features are in store for us that month. I've been Brior, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.